Hey everybody, this is Nemo once again from the Overclocker magazine and today I'm here to talk to you about the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3060 Gaming OC graphics card. Now first things first, let's get the pricing thing or the pricing discussion out of the way. Graphics cards right now cost an exorbitant amount. This has nothing to do with Gigabyte, it's just the situation within which we find ourselves. I don't know how long this is going to continue, but for as long as it's going to continue, you should be expecting these sort of prices for this sort of performance. Now, I say that because I'm very much aware that most people had some issues, let's say, about the apparent performance of the RTX 3060, especially compared to the previous generation graphics cards. With that out of the way, now let's talk about the actual Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3060 Gaming OC. So this is the cheapest GeForce RTX 3060 you can actually get from Gigabyte, at least from the gaming line of the graphics cards. And I would expect this to be the equivalent of perhaps like a Ventus from MSI and a Duo from Asus, right? Something along those lines. So that's the sort of pricing that you're looking at here. And in fact, talking about pricing, the last time I saw a price for this graphics card was at Progenix and that was around 12,500 brand or so, which given the context, once again, isn't actually a bad price for the sort of performance that you're going to get. So before we talk about performance, let's just talk about what's on this graphics card that you can expect. Number one is a backplate. I mean, for a budget graphics card, you're not generally going to expect like a fancy backplate, but they do have one here. So it makes the card look a bit more aesthetic. You also get an RGB colored gigabyte logo is the only rgb that you're going to get on the graphics card and fortunately or unfortunately depending on how you feel about rgb fusion you have to use that to change the colors on the gigabyte logo it's neither here nor there i'm not really concerned with that so i said when we talk performance here we're talking about qhd and full hd this is not a graphics card for 4k gaming if you want 4k gaming on an rtx 3060 you're probably looking at titles from 2015 and older not to say that you cannot play the newer AAA titles at 4K, at least some of them, but to be on the safe side, I wouldn't necessarily consider this a 4K card. And as a result, I did not have any 4K gaming results on this graphics card. If you want to play at the highest graphics fidelity, you're going to have to stick to Full HD or QHD. And in fact, in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Full HD with ultra graphic settings wasn't that bad. The performance was actually better than I expected it to be. So there is an opportunity for you to get maximum pixel quality even though you're not getting that many pixels on screen and besides full HD gaming still looks good okay depending on the screen that you use so with the performance of this graphics card i feel that the current situation as it is right now given that you don't have many options i mean you could look at other alternatives as well but if you get the geforce 1650s costing over 500 dollars depending on where you are in the world so it's not going to get much better than this. Again, when it comes to overclocking, like I said, I increased the power slider and I got immediately better performance. But also another thing that I took advantage of was the fact that this graphics card uses or rather houses 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 from Samsung. And as we all know from Samsung memory, particularly graphics card memory or graphics memory rather, you get a whole lot of overclocking headroom and as usual you can do plus 1000 now this is not to say every one of these graphics cards can do plus 1000 depending on the program that you are using maybe some will do plus 800 only but suffice to say there is some overclocking headroom memory side if you want to get into that and this will be very useful for you if you are considering playing qhd and perhaps maybe stretching that to w or ultra wide qhd now those are the performance results and you can see the difference that overclocking makes in the synthetic tests. In the gaming test, it isn't so much, like I said, it's not the difference between what's playable and what isn't playable, but you are welcome. And I actually would encourage you to go and see how far you could push this graphics card simply because it sips so little power. I mean, even with the power slider turned all the way up, the max power draw I recorded was 181 watts. That's according to GPU-Z, which is nothing. You know, and considering the kind of performance that you can get, particularly at full, at full HD, and even without the overclock, you're looking at 170 watts. But at the same time, you're looking at temperatures that are below 80 degrees, usually in the mid 70s at worst. So it's overall, in, in terms of build quality and what you should expect from this graphic card, I think it lives up to it. I would not imagine an RTX 3060 being much better than what Gigabyte is 
presenting to us here and maybe even to the detriment of the Aorus models if there are any right i just don't think that they would be significantly better than this graphics card and despite them costing so much more they wouldn't necessarily give you much better performance than what you're getting here so am i happy with the kind of performance that the geforce rtx 3060 the gaming oc from gigabyte is giving me i think it's respectable performance like i said if you stick to full hd and wqhd you're going to be more than happy with that and if you want to stretch that out to ultra wide qhd then yeah then you can try the memory overclocking so yeah if you are going to be looking at a graphics card i'm thinking yeah this is something that you might consider i mean for around twelve and a half thousand, assuming you can still get it for that price it is a fair ask you know you're going to get performance that is going to deliver like i said qhd full hd you're going to get reasonable performance here and in fact um if you look at the metro exodus results i actually ran that with dlss and i was using the highest graphics fidelity obviously not going extreme with the ray tracing just using the presets and the performance is still respectable and it's very much playable so like i said i know that people weren't necessarily fond of the 3060 but if you give it a chance and you are realistic about what sort of performance that you are going to get given the context we are in with vga pricing and availability i think this is a fair ask so if you are able to get a graphics card or at least able to get your hands on the gigabyte geforce rtx 3060 give it a go don't necessarily dismiss it because you've heard all these things about the rtx 3060 it's still worth your time and yeah if you can find it at a decent price progenics woodware or whatever consider it as for me i think it's a fair graphics card i would like to see it a little bit more available because that would literally mean that the pricing goes down a bit but i have no real complaints about it outside of that it can get a little bit loud sometimes but that's when you're running Fermark and you're not going to be running Fermark all the time. You're going to be running games. So overall, as this graphics card is an entry level graphics card or an entry into the Ampere range of graphics cards, this is a fair graphics card. It could have been better, but it is what it is right now. And for what we have available to us, this isn't a bad graphics card to consider so let me know what you think about the rtx 3060 in general or particularly this one as well stick around for the benchmarks at the end of this and remember to share like subscribe and i'll see you guys on the flip side now take care and peace